Hi, welcome to Coursera's Instrumental Analysis class. I'm Vicki Colvin. This is lecture seven in week four. We've been talking about chromatography. And in this lecture, which is really getting towards the end of the week, we're going to be sort of linking it all together with a brief discussion of resolution in chromatography. Resolution is the separation between peaks. And it's really the reason that we go to all of this work to try to make our peaks very narrow in chromatographic separations. So resolving chromatography peaks can be done just by eye. You sort of know when two peaks are separated, but it's actually a pretty quantitative way to do it. The resolution between two peaks is, is defined in chromatography by the distance or the time difference between their resolution, between their retention times. So if you have one at 10 minutes and one at five minutes, just delta TR is five minutes. And then you divide that separation between the peak heights by their average of their widths. And for that, you're going to take their base width. If you have a measure of another width, you just have to convert it to the base width to use this formula. And when you do that, you're going to calculate a number, which is the resolution. If that resolution is larger than about 1.5, in some cases 2, then you're going to say that you have a well-resolved set of peaks. If on the other hand, as you can see in these top examples, the resolution is only 0.5 or 0.75, your peaks are not really distinct. So a lot of times, depending on what your application is, you might be able to get away with a resolution of only 1.5, but sometimes you need baseline separation. Let's say if you're integrating the peaks for quantitative analysis, that might require a resolution of 3. So as the resolution gets larger, that effectively says your peaks are far separated and they're easy to tell apart. Now, you might want to think through, what are two ways to separate these peaks? Well, one way would be what we've been talking about the last few mini lectures, which is to simply make a set of choices that makes those peak widths narrower. You might increase the number of theoretical plates. You might decrease the plate width, both of which should narrow those peaks up. But you might also consider another way to do it is to simply separate the retention times. And that would go back to the first part of this week, which is what can you do to accentuate the chemical difference between those two so that the partition into the stationary phase is different, more different for one than the other. And that's another strategy that you'll actually see used quite a lot in liquid chromatography. But if you want to get a good, well-resolved peak then, you have a lot of different opportunities. So really the purpose of this lecture is just to sort of take you through and make sure you know how to define resolution and relate it to parameters like n. And I'll just emphasize that in this expression, w is going to be that base width or the width you get by basically making the triangle and measuring the base of that triangle. If you go back a couple of lectures, you can see those definitions. OK, so you might stop and try to do these examples. Um, they're really, really straightforward. And as you can see, all you're doing is taking the difference in two retention times between a peak at 5 and 5.8, and you're simply dividing it by a base width, an average of two base widths, and then you're deriving a resolution. Now, in this case, what we did in the second example is we changed our conditions so things are eluding later. So we must have done something to have things spend more time in the stationary phase, or maybe we're just sim simply running at a slower flow rate. Whatever the case, we changed the separation. And one of the ways you can use resolution is to decide, did, was it a good thing that I changed or a bad thing? And in this case, it was actually not a good thing to do. So even though you separated the peaks a little bit in time, they got much broader. And that ended up hurting the resolution of the separation. One of the last things I just want to emphasize is that you can link resolution to, sep to basically the parameters we've been using to characterize how good of a separation we have. So this expression is the resolution that we've just been calculating related to the number of theoretical plates of a column. You'll see that I'm not going to derive this, this equation, but it's a relatively straightforward expression, which lets you, for example, if you have a desired resolution, calculate what your number of equivalent plates has to be. I'll make a note. I sometimes call things the number of equivalent plates or the number of theoretical plates. Those two terms are relatively interchangeable. I'll try to be consistent, though, and use the number of theoretical plates. So if you hear me say something different, just know that I meant the number of theoretical plates. OK, so in this expression, in order to use it, you need to know the retention times of the two analytes in question. Remember, you cannot define a resolution without having two peaks. I'm going to say that again. You can't define a resolution without having two peaks. So to ask what is the resolution of your separation is actually not a good question because you don't know if you have two peaks. Okay.
I beat that course pretty dead. In any case, you're going to calculate using this formula. Um, it's, it's a very useful one for backtracking how good your column has to be. Here's a quick example about just an application. So let's say in this above example in the box, how many theoretical plates would you have to need, would you have to have in order to separate these two very, very closely spaced peaks? Well, we just set R is equal to 2 because that's our desired resolution. Gamma has already been given to us. I calculated it to be 0 0.0205. And then you can simply work up the math and you will get a number of equivalent plates of about 152,000. So what we've done is I've given you all of the information you need in sort of in this one chart to understand widths in chromatography. We've talked about the single widths. The fact that you can talk about the plate height, you want that to be small for narrow peaks. You can also increase the number of theoretical plates in a column, that's n. And in both of those ways, you can try to make the separation much, much better and those peaks much, much more narrow. Then we talked about resolution. And resolution is a relatively simple thing to define. You can improve the resolution by either separating peaks more or by narrowing up the width of the peaks. So that concludes the formal mini lectures. There'll be one more mini lecture, which is just a series of examples that will prepare you well for both the quiz and the problem set.